Meghan Markle dazzled in a stunning blue dress as she attended a state dinner hosted by the President of Fiji, but unlike the Duchess of Cambridge who attended a similar event on Tuesday night, the Duchess of Sussex did not wear a tiara. State dinners are the primary occasions when female royals are permitted to wear tiaras from the royal family's collection, and it was believed Meghan would make her tiara debut in Fiji. However, the Duchess, who is on her first major trip to Oceania with Prince Harry, opted for a low-key look and did not wear any ornamental jewelry at the event. Meanwhile, last night the Duchess of Cambridge wore the diamond tiara that once belonged to Princess Diana at Buckingham Palace for the Dutch state banquet in honor of Queen Maxima and King Willem Alexander. Contrary to speculation, Royal protocol regarding tiaras has nothing to do with Meghan and Kate's royal ranks or their husband's positions in line to the throne. Instead, the decision of whether or not to wear a tiara is determined by the dress code of the event and personal preference. Meghan may have also been deterred from wearing the tiara at the event as she would have been obliged to travel with the precious jewelry from London to Fiji. Despite going tiara-free, the Duchess of Sussex stunned in a full-length gown by Safiya, which revealed her blooming baby bump. She completed the look with a dazzling pair of diamond earrings. At her side, Prince Harry looked dashing in a bow tie, with his military medals on display. At the evening event, the president of Fiji, Jayoji Conrad, paid tribute to Princess Diana in a touching speech. He said he was sure she would be proud of the man Harry had become and that he had found happiness and love with Meghan. Harry described the trip to Fiji as nostalgic after the Queen visited the country with Prince Philip following her coronation in 1953. Harry said, This visit is particularly nostalgic for us as a young married couple. My grandparents stayed in this very hotel, the Grand Pacific, a number of times over the years. But this visit is also an opportunity to learn more about the future of Fiji, your economic growth, sustainable tourism development and social enterprises. We are really looking forward to meeting the students at the University of the South Pacific and the young leaders from all walks of life. The health and sustainability of this planet depends on the younger generation and they are full of optimism, so let's listen to them. Meghan Markle has compared pregnancy to having jet lag after wowing crowds on Bondi Beach, Sydney. The Duchess of Sussex gave an insight into her pregnancy during an anti-bad vibe circle hosted by mental health campaign group One Wave. Meghan, 37, spoke with 35-year-old Charlotte Connell who is much further along the line at 23 weeks pregnant, about how motherhood has had her waking up at 4.30 a.m. to do yoga. Ms. Connell said, Meghan told me that pregnancy was like having jet lag. She said she was up at 4.30 am this morning doing yoga in her room as she couldn't sleep. It's a bit of a double whammy for her, she said, as she has both the baby and the jet lag to contend with. We both talked about how you feel jet lagged even though you have not traveled anywhere. Even in her jet lag, she got up to do yoga this morning at 4.30 am. Physical activity like yoga and surfing is so good for healing your mind. Mental health is something Prince Harry has spoken out on and is a keen campaigner to help raise awareness. Meghan and Harry listened to the group for 10 minutes and shared their own personal experiences with the illness to the local community surfing group. In a statement Kensington Palace said, to turn the tide on stigma surrounding mental health issues. One Wave is encouraging people to share their experiences of living with mental health issues and the power of opening up using. Dabri Eulick Whale, 37, who took part in the session was full of praise for the relatable royal couple. She said, Oh my goodness, they were just so real, so relatable. They shared their own experiences, which was amazing. Shortly after Meghan and Harry had a go at waxing a surfboard as they dipped their toes in the sand at the famous Australian beach. Meghan wore a sleeveless Martin Grant dress with espadrille tie wedges with a garland of flowers around her neck, whilst Harry wore a light blue shirt, beige trousers and espadrilles. The pair are currently on day four of their whirlwind 16-day tour of Australia, Fiji, Donga, and New Zealand.
Tomorrow the royal couple will be on Cockatoo Island where they will be watching the Invictus Games, a competition created by Prince Harry which will see 18 nations represented. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are heading to the picturesque Fraser Island this afternoon on the seventh day of their landmark 16-day tour of Oceania, and they are expected to stay in the award-winning Kingfisher Bay Resort, which will be perfect for the pregnant Duchess who has been left worn out following a week of engagements. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have a variety engagements to attend and will be met upon their arrival by the traditional owners of Kukri, the Butchola people and the Premier of Queensland. Their Royal Highnesses will also take part in a traditional welcome to country smoking ceremony and unveil a plaque for the dedication of the forests of Kukri to the Queen's Commonwealth canopy. Fraser Island's rainforest is home to the Satinay trees which, known for their hardiness and water, were used to build the London docks in the 1930s. It has been reported the Duchess will not take part in all of her official duties during the day but will instead will rest in the fancy resort which boasts quiet beaches, secluded villas and a fancy health spa. Kensington Palace said in a statement, after a busy program, the Duke and Duchess have decided to cut back the Duchess's schedule slightly for the next couple of days, ahead of the final week and a half of the tour. The Duke will continue with the engagements on Fraser Island as planned. It is believed Meghan has not been suffering from morning sickness, but she has been left worn out following a series of back-to-back -back official events around Australia this past week. Prince Harry and Meghan arrived at Hervey Bay around an hour ago in an Aussie RAF jet. The couple left the airport in separate cars as the Duchess is expected to spend the day resting in a resort on Fraser Island. Meghan and Harry have just arrived at Harvey Bay. The Duchess of Sussex stopped to say hello to well-wishers and she is now expected to board the Tasman Adventure, a local whale-watching operating boat that will bring her to the island. The Duke is taking a different boat as he needs to take a quicker route. Hundreds of royal fans have arrived early at the Riverhead's Wharf Barge Stop, hoping to catch a glimpse of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Suzanne Denton, from Riverhead's has been at the stop since 6.30 am. Ms Denton said she hopes to get a picture with Prince Harry. She added, I've followed Harry all of his life. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are currently flying to Fraser Island. A video shows the couple boarding the plane, Meghan is wearing a loose purple dress while Harry a navy blue shirt and a pair of camel chino. Prince Harry is expected to receive the traditional welcome to country smoking ceremony from the Butchola people before a plaque is unveiled to dedicate the popular holiday spots pristine rainforests to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy Project. He will also visit Lake Mackenzie before meeting rangers from the National Park to learn about the picturesque island's unique animal and plant life. Fraser Island's hardwood trees were used to build the London docks in the 1930s due to their famed hardiness in water. Queensland Premier Anastasia Palazczuk will also hand the newly pregnant couple a handmade teddy bear from Tanbo. Prince Harry has revealed he's hoping that his first child with wife Meghan Markle is a girl. During his appearance at an Invictus Games event on Sunday, Prince Harry, 34, let slip his preference after a bystander congratulated him on the pregnancy. Congratulations, I hope it's a girl, the royal fan was heard shouting. So do I. Prince Harry responded. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex announced their baby news last Monday, shortly after their arrival in Sydney for the Invictus Games. Despite reportedly being around three months pregnant, Meghan, 37, has largely kept pace during their jam-packed tour of Australia, which has seen stopovers in Dobo, Melbourne and will today take them to Fraser Island in Queensland. Kensington Palace said on Sunday that Meghan will be taking a step back from the limelight across the rest of the tour, after skipping an event yesterday morning due to tiredness. As a solo Harry left the medal ceremony at the Invictus Games cycling event, disappointed onlookers yelled out, Harry, where's Meghan? He told the crowd, she's resting at home. Being pregnant takes its toll.
While Meghan is accompanying her husband to Fraser Island, she will no longer be taking part in her official duties there. After a busy program, the Duke and Duchess have decided to cut back the Duchess's schedule slightly for the next couple of days, ahead of the final week and a half of the tour, Kensington Palace said in a statement. The Duke will continue with the engagements on Fraser Island as planned. It comes amid reports that the royal couple plans to raise their child to have a relatively normal life. A source claiming to be friends with Harry and Meghan told UK newspaper The Sunday Times that they don't want their child to assume any official royal role. That word normal looms very large for Harry and Meghan when it comes to their child's future, the source told the publication. The royal baby is due in the British spring, which runs from March until May, and will be seventh in line to the throne.